The Rogaldorn Heavy Battle Tank is one of the many vehicles of the Astra Militarum's mighty arsenal that greet the enemy with a wall of thunderous fire and glinting steel through their relentless campaigns across the galaxy in defense of the Imperium. Apt for breaking through enemy strong points, bringing to bear heavier firepower than the standard Lehman Russ. Greetings everyone, in this video I will be going through the process of how I prepared this Rogaldorn tank of the Valhallen Ice Warriors for battle. The Rogaldorn is a tank that I really like the design of. I know some people have taken issue with the more rounded cast appearance, saying it does not fit with the traditional traditionally angular construction of Imperial Guard vehicles, but I personally like the change, taking more aesthetic cues from World War II American vehicles. I mean, when equipped with the Oppressor Cannon, it essentially becomes a squashed up Chibi Fi T1 heavy tank with the sponsons removed, down to the odd fixed machine gun placements on the nose of the hull. Although I may be a little bit biased, since this is an era of vehicle design I have more personal interest in, as opposed to the more World War I inspired aesthetic, but I still think it does the job of carrying the charm of amalgamating historical and sci-fi design elements that 40k is famous for. Speaking of World War II, for my Valhallen vehicles, I like to paint them in a scheme inspired by wire fence winter camouflages from that period. I personally find this more interesting than doing a full plain white winter camo or the typical multicolor camo scheme. I'll also touch on some of the other additions I have made onto this model, but as far as painting is concerned, I will mainly be focusing on the camouflage as that is the most prominent feature of the model, and most of the other miniatures and components I basically painted using the usual painting formula you find in any Citadel or Games Workshop painting tutorial with a base coat, shade, highlights, etc, and just swapping out the appropriate colors. Again, I wouldn't consider myself a painting expert, these videos are after all more of a showcase of the projects I get up to, and I'm still learning as I go along as well. But back to painting the tank itself, and in my opinion, the method I used to paint this model is a lot simpler than it may seem. So here's a very quick rundown of the process I went through. To do this, the basic principle of how I paint temporary winter camouflages will form the backbone of the scheme. A quick and effective way I find to achieve this effect is by starting by painting on the white first and working your way backwards by applying the base color in parts where the coat of white that was applied over the original colors have been worn away. This is primarily done with a sponge in a similar manner to sponge chipping, albeit with more intensity, where you put some paint on a sponge, wipe off most of the excess in a similar manner to preparing a dry brush and dab the paint onto the model, starting more heavily on the edges as those are the parts that would usually see the most wear. Occasionally in parts I lightly drag the sponge along to give this faded streaking effect. These streaks can also resemble directional wear like scrapes and scratch marks. Usually this is going inwards from an open edge, but also I do this somewhat sparingly on some flatter surfaces as well. I also have a small brush on hand to paint in the areas of the model that are hard to chip precisely with a sponge, put some manual refinements on already chipped areas and adding scratch marks and the like. There are more nuances in expanding upon manually chipping with a brush to reflect patterns of wear that would naturally occur, some of which I have applied here that is difficult to concisely explain in a crash course style that I'm doing now, and something I'm also in the process of learning along the way as well, but even without it, I still feel you can achieve a decent result that is more than serviceable for the tabletop or as a display piece. Anyways, the main difference here, however, is before I proceed with the chipping, I block out the patches of green and apply the white crisscross patterns, starting with the lines going in one direction and then the ones that cross over. For these, I just eyeball them, as since you don't necessarily want them to be perfectly straight in the first place for the more rough field applied look. And among the crisscross patterns, I also intentionally add some curved lines as well for a bit of variety and intentional inconsistency. This is also when I apply the decals as they will also have the chipping effect placed over them as well. By the way, I really like the new Valhalla decals with the red bear and the crossed axes. It's a nice nod towards the historical inspiration behind the Valhalla and Ice Warriors whilst adding its own twist. As for the shading, I recess shade most of the vehicle with the brown wash, in this case Citadel Agrax Earthshade, which will appear quite strongly over the white as a result, and I find this can, in effect, give a somewhat catch-all effect that not just shades the model, but also can pass for a buildup of grime and rust as well, albeit not as effectively as a dedicated method. The metallics I painted in a similar manner of how I painted the tracks here, just a base coat of chrome or brass, followed by an all-over shade of a brown or black wash and a dry brush of the original color. With the tracks after this process, I also painted some black onto the rubber segments as well. After the tracks are attached, I water down some Citadel Typhus Corrosion and liberally apply it along the running gear and its surrounding areas that would be prone to get stained from the mud being thrown around, whilst having another wet brush on hand to fade it into the surrounding areas where this layer wasn't applied. The paint itself is similar to a wash but thicker and contains texture particles. In my opinion, this is an easy to use and quite versatile weathering tool and among other things in this particular case, good for quickly applying a soft muddy defect on the vehicle. Following this, I very lightly dry brush parts of the running gear and armor with white which serves to both highlight some raised details 
details and as a mild weathering effect. And finally, I apply some snow paste along the treads as well as some of its adjacent areas. After painting in the lenses, the tank itself is basically done. For the lenses, I used the technique of gradually painting lighter shades of the color towards a single point before finally dotting it and the opposite side with white and coating it with a gloss varnish. But for this particular model, I don't want to stop there, I want to add some more character to this model. The Rogaldorn kit by default comes with a plethora of crew models and stowage for this very purpose, some of which I have already applied, including the tank commander from the upgrade kit, painted as a commissar for situations when the bolt pistol is found a little lacking. But I want to take this a step further with tank riders. Of course, being Valhallen, this will include a standard bearer with a bright red banner, waving a sword, shouting patriotic slogans to inspire their comrades. G-Dubs did produce official Valhallen tank rider models, some of which I have here, but these are quite old and have weird proportions that would make them contrast with the rest of the crew models. Fortunately, Valhallens are one of the more easier sub-factions of the Astra Militarum to kitbash, as you can essentially use a helmeted Cadian head and put a single large segment of sculpting putty in the middle, with two smaller bits following the edges of the helmet, and sculpting on the fur texture, and you can end up with something that can pass for an Ushanka. For bodies, I use a mix of seated gunners from the heavy ordnance kits and the kneeling models from the Cadian upgrade sprue. Finally, with the tank riders mounted, another Rogaldorn tank is now available to roll forth and crush the enemies of the Imperium. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video interesting. I post more regular updates on any model projects I have going on on my Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to check me out there, and also be sure to check out the rest of my channel and subscribe if what I do here interests you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.